did you put some, uh, we get Marcus did back some, too. Did you put some quarters in the machine and pull the lever? Some quarters back, man. Yeah, I don't know what the hell's going on. Yeah. Wacky shit, man. It's wacky. Because it I know y'all were and look, that was a good conversation. Talking about yeah. BB. Yeah, he can't leave. He can, you gotta come back on there, Marcus. Come Bro, on, so we talked so like you know, we talked about BB like in in the in an alternate multi universe, BB BB Bill Beatenbow gets fired. You know what Big I mean? Bill. Yeah. Like, that's the dumbest shit you could ever do. Yeah, because, I like I said, like I said, homie gonna be hired in like 0.375 seconds, yeah. and it's gonna yeah. and it's gonna be to Alabama or a big school like that. And then Bill Bedenbo in Alabama and all those places are gonna use those millions of dollars that these cats are making in the NFL. They're gonna be using it against Oklahoma. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and like you just like that's the dumbest shit we could possibly do, or hey, anybody could do. I listen, don't think I don't that, think Joe Castiglione. Shit. They're not that dumb, dude. There's no there's way. No way they can. There's no. You heard, yeah, you heard you heard Venables last week. He was like, he's the best there is. Why would we get rid of him? Well, I yeah, said it on. I, I said it on Coach Rick's show last night. When this new OC comes in and he looks at Bill Biedenboe, he's going to say, okay, my box is for Bill Biedenboe. 11 seasons at OU, 13, 13 cats in the NFL, one, and one is the highest paid center check. Mm -hmm. All Bill getting Biedenboe. used against us. And Bill oh. Biedenboe, Bill Biedenboe, best O-line coach in college football, check. That OC ain't going to get rid of Bill Biedenboe just because of Dude. what he's Bro, you never know with these cats, bro. Mm -hmm. Some of these, these dudes, these coaches these days, man, they they don't want any remnants of what was before. They don't give a damn if you're saving. Like some of these yeah. dudes will get rid of you just to get rid of you to show you who's got the bigger. You know, the, the, yeah. you know, I ain't gonna say it, but just show you who's you know who's the man. Yeah, and they don't want nothing to do with it, man. They want a clean house and they want their own guys. And I mean. Dude, I don't know, man. Do you, I wouldn't be surprised if, if they did hire a new a new OC and they gave them autonomy, you know, autonomy to fire and keep whoever they want. If that dude doesn't clean house, mm -hmm. right. well, here's the thing: I I, I can guarantee egos, you, egos. I can guarantee you right now that if um, there's Marcus, whoever is whoever is. And Marcus, I didn't kick you guys that kicked it because I wasn't in here. So I know you guys were having a good conversation. Y'all can get right back to it. Uh, whatever it was, it kicked it. But listen, this guy's asking right here, uh, goaded. I understand frustration, but talking about fire and BB is the most casual take I've ever heard. And I'll tell you what, it isn't coming casual from this show. AF. Yeah, it's it's not coming from this show. I can tell you that no. I've been the one guy that's been saying I don't want to hear that shit on this show. Um, I've but Christopher Shannon, who comes on here all the time, says it. And then you've got that opinion podcast guy that, I mean, I had that dude blocked a long time ago, but he was giving me all kinds of hell on Barry and Mac one night, giving me every reason in the world. I'm like, I'm not even listening to you, dude. I'm not talking to you. Just continue on. I don't want to hear it. I'm here to listen to them. And yeah. it continued on and on and on and on. Believe that. So... Just know that, mm -hmm. you know, this isn't coming from this channel here. It's, I know it's not coming from Jay. I know it's not coming yeah. from, from Mike and those guys. It's not coming from us. You know, it, we're not casuals, hearing, bro. you're not hearing it on K. Chris's show. You're not hearing it on anybody that knows what the hell they're talking about when it comes to Oklahoma football. I promise you that. Oh, Jason, yeah. I am drinking my own bath water. Here's my cup. It's <laughs> nasty, man. Hey, hey, Mike. I had I've only heard that saying one time, right? And it, it wasn't. It's not drinking my own bath water, right? So my old basketball coach, R.I.P. Slim Richards, uh, his name was Lanny Richards. Um, he was my environmental ed teacher in high school. And one time, you know, I don't know how we got onto it or whatever, and and somehow we were talking about Sophia Loren, and oh my god, um, you know that the actress. Yeah, just a total smoke <laughs> show. And, I know where you're going with this one. 
<laughs> and he said, I drink her bath water. And that, I will never <laughs> forget that saying. And I was like, that's disgusting as hell. But when the yeah, sooner legend, was, when the, when the sooner legend was a very young man back in the early 70s, he had a poster of S Sophia Loren oh on his wall. God, dude, God. dude, yeah, yeah, she, <laughs> she's crazy. gorgeous, man. She's gorgeous. This is right here, AJ Golden said, he said, BB is the saving of all O line coaches. And then we got a super chat from Coach Ricks. Yeah, Coach, Thanks, Coach Ricks, if you fire Bill. <laughs> And he goes to a different school. That school will now be able to use who he has put in the NFL's recruiting tool. I think that's exactly what you just said, too, right? That's exactly what go. I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Probably a little go. bit. Coach Ricks put it a little more eloquent, you know what I mean, than than my uh, <laughs> my 11 Bravo infantryman, <laughs> caveman speak. But yeah, he uh, that's that's exactly what I meant. Chris Mason didn't. That's not what he said. That's not what he, he said. We would have to get rid of BB. What do you mean by that? I don't think I didn't. I didn't hear him say that. And I've been on this the after shows with him for the last for the last Three month. Weeks. Yeah, my last month. You've been on there. I've never heard Chris Mason say that. I've never seen heard him say that either. And so I I know better. I know better than that. And I just Bro, tell that's you, the I, dumbest shit you could say. Like, if, yeah, if look, you say that, like, I'm, he's talking I'm about, tuning you I out. know he actually said, you know what, you're going to lose that entire class, plus the classes that you've picked up in the last two years, you're going to have to restart. He also said the same thing, by the way, for all of you that want, you know, and I may be one of these people that want to see DeMarco not hang around for very long, but he said the same, same thing there is that you're liable to lose some guys. You're going to lose some guys. How about X Rob Saturday? My God, did y'all hear the popping heat when he was laying the wood to them cats? My Bro, God, brother. Xavier Robinson should have been, in, and this is the, there's another reason why you got to wonder why it is that these guys aren't playing. You haven't seen Hicks at all. That guy's probably gone to the thing. But I want you guys to stay on the Big Bill stuff because yep. really, I think that this is the most important thing that we talk <laughs> about. Period. I'm gonna work on some of this other stuff as far as keywording it because I want people to to listen to this. Look, just coming from you, and I know it may cut you off there, Marcus, but you've got a son who's a freshman. He's going to be a, a redshirt freshman. I mean, obviously, I heard you say that you wouldn't necessarily – you wouldn't make him do anything because he's he's his own man. But, I mean, chances are he's probably not going to hang around, right? I mean, I can't imagine any of these guys hanging around. I mean, it, it would be hard. It would have to be – something different would have to happen for him to hang around. Um, I can't, I can't, I can't speak for him. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I can tell you my advice would be, you look at this thing from the beginning to the end. Um, Coach B is just a, a guy that he wants to be up under, man. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it works, however it works, he likes what he does. And, and one thing that really got Isaiah was he's close to his mom. Mm -hmm. And from day one, he, he have heard how Pat Summit was. And he is as close as to Pat Summit when it comes to discipline and creating good good ball players. And that's something that he that he wants, you know, um, mm -hmm. for himself. I mean, like my wife said, they couldn't, man, they was, you know, freshman, sophomore year, they couldn't stand Pat. Not in a way that they hated her. It was just that. They had to learn her. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's the same way with Big Bill, man. You have to learn him, man. You have to earn his trust. Bro, you yeah. have to earn that guy. He is not going to give you anything. No. You got to earn it. But you hear you hear that from Gabe Barker all the time, that nobody's going to get a job that they haven't earned from Big no. Bill. And don't, don't expect happen. you to give it to him. Because he In fact, work. Darius Afalava was talking about that was a major reason why he wanted to come to Oklahoma. He's coming in the next class. That was one of the major things. He was like, you got to earn what you get here. I love yep. that. And it's like, there you go. I mean, it doesn't make bro, a difference which, whether you're a five-star or a three-star. You got to earn it, bro. Yeah, Dude, you know, some of these kids these days, they don't know that they need that type of coaching in their life. You know what That's I mean? Right. But then, but then there are some cats like Alpha Lava and some, you know, Isaiah and EPO and some of these dudes, they're like, I need it. I know I need it. And it's what's best for me. And, and they go to it, man. 
and mm -hmm. they, you know, they, dude, those are the dudes you want. And, you know, that's what you hear when you hear BV, those dudes are made up of the right stuff. It's exactly what he's talking about. And, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and he said, he's like, I like what BV said, you know, if a little, a little rough storm, or I'm paraphrasing, but if the storm is rough, and that's what gets you to go. I'll help you pack your bag. Yeah, bro, yeah. that's just, that's real, bro. That's yeah, I said, and man, BV was BV was in his bag the other week in that in that uh in that in that press conference, man. He was in his bag. He was preaching the good word, bro. And yeah. I was, dude. Was, everybody's like, it's the longest that it, dude. I felt like that press conference went like that, and that's yeah. the shit I love, dude. When I used to go on those recruiting trips with my he son, and we would sit up in his, too. dude. Know? We would sit up in his office, and he would just go, and I'm sitting there, bro. Like, Oh, I'm eating it up, bro. bro. Eating it up. And you know, shit, I'm looking around thinking I got a COVID year, maybe, you know what I mean? <laughs> or maybe a grad a grad transfer year. Like, I'm thinking, like, damn, bro. Like, this dude really got me in here thinking I ain't broke and I could play a year. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, and the dude that, I, is I, I, the ultimate motivator and leader. And man, if you're talking, wife, if you want BV fired? Hey, 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 look, check this out, Mike. My wife was sitting in there when we was all in there when he Isaiah got his chip, you know, and she was she was like, "This is it? I don't care. You you coming here? I mean, he hadn't made a decision, you know, at all, <laughs> you know." But mom was like, "You know, you know." She was like, "You know, it's your decision, but I want you here." I mean, that, mm -hmm. and then he looked at me like, "What about you?" I like, I like it. I like it. I, mean, like, yeah. I just didn't know what he said. I didn't know if y'all liked it or not. He said, I've, I've already, you know, yeah. like what I see. And that's when we came, committed, like two weeks later, we shut the recruiting down, bro. And his stock yeah. dropped after we shut the recruiting down. What was crazy? Bro, let me, let me, let me tell you, man. That. I, I knew I knew my son was going to Oklahoma before he did. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I, I knew I dude, I could tell. I kind of felt that I, way. I kind of felt that bro, way. Bro, I know, I know my son, right? I know him. Like he's a he's I don't want to say he like wants to tell everybody. He's not out there. He's kind of, you know, he's kind of keeps himself, you know, he's he'll, he's he's a talker, he'll talk to you, but you know, he's just kind of He's kind of low key, you know what I mean? He's low key, and shit, bro. I knew he was going to Oklahoma before he did. I remember we were sitting on the couch one day, and we was watching some college football. I was like, "When are you going to commit to Oklahoma?" And he looked at me. He's like, "I was like, bro, I already know. Like, yeah, <laughs> like he ain't hiding nothing from me." And it wasn't yeah. like he was trying, but I was like, "Bro, I, I could tell. I could see by the way you act." When you get in Oklahoma, I could see how you act when you get around Coach Venables, yeah. Coach Hall, Coach yeah. Bates. Like yeah. I could just see the little yeah. twinkle in your eye. I was like, so yeah. let's just let's and, stop and the BS. Let me, let and let's get it done. Here. When you when you were on your visits, I could tell the kids that was gonna come. I could mm -hmm. tell the kids that that was gonna come to Oklahoma. It was a different look. They they kind of all interacted together, and I like yeah. told my wife, "Oh, they come," and I'm I'm talking about dead on pretty much, bro. Hey, and I was it, just talking to Reggie. I was just talking to Reggie Powers this last weekend, and we was having dinner. Um, shout out Torchy's Tacos, man. Good lord, <laughs> what? that shit was fire. Torchy's tacos out there in, in, in Norman. Torchy tacos. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, bro. Oh, I gotta write that they one got, down, they got, bro. Hey, they got this little uh, Jamaican uh, jerk chicken taco. Oh, that's oh, right. Yeah. 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 Some, <laughs> dude, that shit was killer. But anyway, <laughs> I got a little sidetracked. But I, I would, I was talking to Reggie, and I was like, Reggie, do you? Because we you know we were on a game day visit when Reggie came down the first time. Reggie and his dad. And uh, it was after the game. We were walking up, and I could just kind of see it in him. And I and I was like, Reggie, do you remember what I said to you? Well, you know, it's like we was getting ready to leave the leave the game and, and, and go to dinner. He's like, Yeah, I remember. And I was like, What I say? And he's like, Are you ready to come home? And and I was like, Reggie, what did you say? He's like, Yeah. He's like, yeah. 
I was looking at him. And I walked up to him, and I was like, you ready to come home? He's like, oh, yeah, I am. You know, and I can just tell. I can yeah. see it. Like, I've seen kids. Like, I don't know. What happened? And they're on their phone, tired, and, you know. And, and don't think them coaches ain't watching, bro. All them coaches is in the room. Damn, I'm gonna stop talking. I'm gonna do it. Did he fall out? We get kicked off. I don't want to. I don't want to waste. I don't no know chance. what happened to him. No, nah, you, know, you I, guys. You. I couldn't hear you very good. Back. I couldn't hear you very good. I'm back. I'm, back. I'm in I'm there. there. I just. I just echo. Echo. Just doing that shit again. I'm gonna. I'm gonna get out. You guys continue. Yeah. But man, you know, yeah, I'm I gotta, gonna. I go ahead. Same way. Go ahead. I, uh, I'm going to say this from a fan perspective. I was there the night that BV landed at the airport when, when, you know, the night he was, that he was hired. I want to say this from just from my perspective, after listening to him talk to us and, you know, had all the pomp and circumstance there, I get home and my brother, uh, I take care of my brother cause he's in uh, early stages of dementia and, uh, Parkinson and, uh, he said, well, how did it go? I went and grabbed my old football pads out of the closet and threw them on the floor. And I said, I'm ready to run through an effing brick wall now. <laughs> he can do it, man. He he can he mm -hmm. can definitely do it, man. Um, you know, um, he shows you every side of life when you're being recruited. You know, mm -hmm. does, am, I, am I right, Mike? Yeah. Yeah. He shows you every side of life when you're being recruited. I was laughing. Uh, what you laughing yeah, at, Mike? Yeah, yeah, dude. I was laughing, but yeah. Oh, okay. But, uh, yeah. But you're right, dude. PV is is he's a hey he's about that though. He's about that life. Yeah. And oh, man. I can't wait hey, to hey, you guys. I, I, I will. I would challenge anybody out there to find me a better recruiter than than, oh. than Brent Venables. I'm serious. Oh. I, I'm serious. Like so, the, I'm gonna I'm gonna go down my list, right? And it's not extensive, and you know, but like just head coaches, right? That that I've had the chance to sit down and be recruited by, right? I'll start. I'll start up in Michigan, right? Coach Harbaugh. It, it was amazing to me. It was surreal. I sat in dude's office for almost an hour and, and talked to him. You know what I mean? He gave me some real answers, mm -hmm. man. I, we had some real conversations, and it, it was real. Um, but he ain't better than Ben Venables. You know what I mean? Talk to Mike yeah. Gundy. Ain't better than Coach Venables. You know what I mean? Sat in uh Eli Drinkowitz's little day room talk to him for 30 45 minutes I was like one of them recruits man just nodding off like hmm this dude is this dude done talking yet you know what I mean I'm serious I'm serious man uh, oh wow you know I sat I sat in uh Mickey Joseph uh when he was the interim head coach at Nebraska yeah um I liked what he I liked what he was saying. Um, I liked Mickey Joseph, um, but he ain't BV. Mm -mm. Never really got to sit down and talk to Matt Rule. Um, but you know, I've heard I've heard he's a pretty persuasive guy. Um, you know, talked to stop in Seattle with Kalen Moore when he was Washington head yeah. coach. Super impressed with him. He is a real individual, easy to talk to, great recruiter. The whole staff up at Washington loved it. I, I, dude, let me tell you something. If my son would have went to Washington, Coach DeBoer and Coach Inge and, and, and those guys, shout out Courtney Morgan. Uh, the, you know, he's the GM at Alabama now. He went with, with Coach DeBoer to Alabama. But, man, those dudes are real dudes, man. Those dudes are real dude. And, um, you know, but like I said, man, they ain't BV. 
And, you know, those are just some of the, the coaches that I could think of right off the top of my head. You know, oh, hey, I mean, I can't forget about my Kansas guys. You know, Coach Kleiman, um, Coach Leipold. I mean, they're great. They're, they're awesome individuals. Love them. And I would have been happy if my son went to play for either one of them. But they ain't, they ain't Coach Venables, man. And and I'm just being real. I got love for all those dudes, especially wow. Coach Leipold, Coach Kleiman. And uh, I got a great relationship with them. But – BV's on another level, and I'm trying to tell you guys, and you don't know until you know. You know, you have to, you have to get recruited by him. And Let me ask you something. Um, like, man, like, the dude is just he's on another level, bro. Kirby Smart came he's to – Persistent as hell, too. Let me tell you something. Yeah, he Persistent. is. Yeah, he is. Just think about this. When did Kirby come to – Georgia 2016. Yeah. It took Somewhere him around, to, it was 2021 around. before he won his first natty. And he came to a team that was pretty loaded, guys. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. you got to get this is not the old day and time, man. I I I'm I'm being honest with you guys. Three years. It's not enough now because I don't think everybody said, well, you can get kids out the portal. Man, look at mm. look at the portal. I don't think you can build your football team out the portal being in the SEC. I don't think you, exactly. you can plug your team, but you can't build your team. You, you know, mm. Mr. Dent, that that's that's what I've learned from Jason as a as a new podcaster. Is yeah, you you can go into the portal and like like let's say you lose lose two or three off your main offensive line due to graduation or the NFL draft. You can go get you some players out of the portal. But the portal, if you go, especially, I'm talking offensive line, you don't yeah. want to build an offensive line out of the portal. Mm -hmm. You want to get the kids out of high school because it takes at least two years to get them offensive linemen gelling, uh, playing together as a unit. Am I right about that, Mr. Dent? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. In my opinion, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, don't get me wrong. You can go out and try to be the highest paid offensive line in college football, and you're going to have some good ball players. But will it be enough to take you all the way through? And that's what I'm saying, man. You, yeah. I think you have to you have to have foundation in anything you do. You build in anything, you have to have foundation. Mm -hmm. You build in a house, you have to found. You Dude, have to you have gotta, it, it, you know. And you build a and, deal, you gotta have and what it. I like about college football, what I like about college football is you're playing for culture, right? Mm -hmm. You're playing for a school, and it's more than money. Yeah, money's starting to creep into it, but there has to be something more, in my opinion, than just playing for money. Exactly. And, you know, there's something to be said. There's something to be said about a team, right? You know, not one to let down your guy to the left and right and giving that extra effort or watching your partner, you know, make a hell of a play and, you know, you want to do it next. You know, they, there's just – it's a different – it's a different aspect, man. And I don't think you can get that from just getting guys yearly in the portal. Like, how do you build that team? You can't you build, build a locker room like that, bro. That's what I'm saying. How do you do that? How do you do that by just, you know, going out and getting the best portal class every year? I, now, don't get me wrong. I think you have to supplement and maybe fill a couple deficiencies in your roster yeah. 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 portal. But I think I think Coach Venables and the staff are doing it the right way, mm -hmm. with, you know, building the foundation in the high school kids and competing for some of these players in the portal and i think they do a great job of evaluating portal guys and not getting in a bidding war and you mm -hmm. know people like to come and oh oklahoma ain't got no money they got out bid da, da, da. no they didn't they just they had their price on what they thought this player was worth and it got out of control mm -hmm. you know and, yeah, and they weren't fitting to do I, it bro man they're gonna take care of those kids it they're going to take care of the, uh, our kids as well as anybody in the country. But they know where they need to be on everything they're doing. You understand what I'm saying? 
And yeah. you can go and outbid somebody for a kid. Take the green kid. You have, they, yeah, he got outbid it. Because guess what? If he if he didn't think so, he would have stayed his butt at Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. They gave him a price tag that he, you know, like, hey, look, they knew Oklahoma probably wasn't going to match that. You understand what I'm saying? Yep. And, you know, like I said, I know mm -hmm. the issues with his dad or whatever, man. But the kid has digressed since he's left. Yeah. <laughs> so, yep. I mean, you, you, you. You didn't. You, you hurt us. You hurt us some by him leaving. Yeah, you did that, but you hurt yourself even more. Mm -hmm. You understand? Know yeah, what I'm and, and, and I would. I would love. I would love for somebody to interview him, and mm -hmm. and hear his yeah. thoughts and take on the whole. He ain't gonna do it, but I would love to hear what he thinks because right now, yeah, he may have got the bag, but. That move looked like it didn't pan out very well. No, I mean, hey, for hey, him Mike, in his football career. Ryman Lemon has a question for you. It says, "Big Bogue, how big of a correlation is there between being a member of the O line and being an Army Bravo? Am I wrong, or do you have to fully trust the man beside you isn't going to leave your pecker in the dirt?" <laughs> yeah, and hey, man, I've hey. I've had this conversation multiple times with a lot of people, and I've had it with Coach Venables. Um, it is – it's the game of football and, and being in the Army and team building and development, it's it's the same, dude. You can you can marry it, right? Mm -hmm. Same concepts of, of building a team and having your buddies back and, you know, one guy, you know, messing up could have dire consequences – to the whole unit or the whole team. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's, you know, it's, it's similar, man. And that's one of the reasons when I was done, you know, playing football in college with my broke self, you know, I spent a year out there and I, I missed that team aspect. And I think I needed that in, in my life, you know? So mm -hmm. I think that is probably the biggest reason I joined the army. Um, at a time of, of war, which probably, you know, yeah. my mom was pissed. My mom wanted to kill me, but you know, I, I needed <laughs> to, bro. I wasn't doing nothing. You know, I was making bad decisions, doing dumb shit. And I, you know, I had to, I had to, I had to get out of that little rut I was in, you know? Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, it's the same thing, dude. You know, it's football in, in, in the military life. Like it's, it's, it correlates, man. And, and there's a lot of, there's a lot of similarities and, you know, I, I don't think you can you can prove otherwise. You know, I, I it's the same. You know, there's just not really life or death consequences in football. But other than that, man, it's the same. Yeah, because you got you got you know in the army and Mike, I, miss, Mr. Dan. I don't know if you're you're a former service member or not, but no, I'm not. Uh, no, I'm not. Uh, but Mike knows what I'm talking about. You got your battle buddy in when you're in the service. Uh, you're, you're, you know, that guy that you would go into the foxhole with who'd have and football, same way. You got the, you got the, especially on the um lines. Uh, you got the guy who, who you want in your foxhole who, who's got your back and who's going that, that y'all's gonna, y'all's gonna try to uh, defend to the end. No doubt. Yeah. No yeah. Doubt. yeah. Yeah, man. And it, that's, you know, that's, it's, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, hell of a thing man when you have that bond you know mm -hmm. with, with somebody else and you know you know that they got your back you know what i mean and you know that they got theirs it's not too often man that you you get those type of, of bonds or relationships but yeah man it's 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 real deal man and it's 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 uh it's a hell of a product when you got it all when you got it all rocking and you're cohesive and you know what you need to do and you know you you know what gap you need to be in and it's it's a battle drill man it's a you know football like playing defense is like a battle drill you know it, you got to react to contact or you know you got to enter and clear a room like you know what to do you know what, what your partner needs to do and you don't have to discuss it it just happens because yeah. you've trained rehearsed it so much like you know what happens when you go in a room and you go See, in my, and enter hey, and clear that's, a room. That, you know? that's it right there with that it's it's, it's a battle drill bro it, it with that offensive line, man, you have number one, you mm -hmm. gotta have a guy beside you that you can trust. 
is yep. going to do what he's yeah. supposed to do. Because if he don't do what he's supposed to do, then guess what? Everything is going to fall apart. Yeah. One person, you can't have one person do right and the other guy do wrong. And that stuff. Time. Coach got to be able to trust you. It's not. And it's, this, you can be the most yeah. athletic player in the country, this, but if you if this, that guy can't trust you beside you by, beside you, and Coach B can't trust you, or any offensive line coach can't trust you to to do the right things, man, you're not going to be on the field, bro. Right. And what I'm talking about, you know, this stuff I'm talking about, this shit doesn't happen overnight. No. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like there's there's a, a at a minimum a year of training, you know, that you do in the army, you know, to get to a proficient level. Right. Mm -hmm. And it starts at the lowest level, you know, individual, you know, team, squad, platoon, you know, mm -hmm. company, battalion, brigade level training. Like it takes a long time. And when you have an offensive line and you got a different dude in a different position every week. Yeah, it's hard yeah. to it's hard to attain, man. It's hard to get to that level of proficiency that you know what the guy to your left and right's gonna do. And there's maybe some nonverbal cues that like, hey, yeah, we're, we're gonna chip and work up to this linebacker on this play. Man, you know what I mean? You, let me like, give you a perfect example. That it, happens it's, Saturday. it doesn't happen, man. Right. Mm -hmm. Let me give you a perfect example that happened Saturday, Isaiah and Eddie, of which they have been beside each other, but Isaiah somehow. Stepped on any foot, man, and fell backwards or whatever the situation was. But you know, the, as they get older, that stuff is not going to happen. You know, right. and he was like, "Hey, bro," he said, "Hey, man, my bad." You know, but but the thing about it is, it takes time to be out there on the field together, man. To mm -hmm. to to know what this guy yeah. going to do, how quick he's going to get out. You know, I you know, so my step could be this way or whatever the situation is. Man, that takes time. And like you said, when you move somebody and you got a GT pool or something like that, and you're the tackle and you got this guard that you don't know how fast he's going to go. You don't know where your space need to be behind him. If you're too close to him, you miss the guy that you're, that you're supposed to get. You know, it's just those things like that guy. Those things are going to have to have time. That's going to have the timing got to get right on it. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? So I feel, man, I feel like we're in a good space. I know the fans think we're not in a good space, but you got to realize this team right here, man, look at the look at the adversity that they have overcome already. Yeah. With the five guys being out, man. What team, and I don't care, you can say, well, next man up. Man, there's a reason why ones are ones, twos are twos, and threes are threes. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Because guess mm. what? That yeah. two, he might be a one someday, but right now he's not. He's he, he's not a one because he still got to grow into being a one. That yeah. three got to grow into being a, a two, and then that two grows into being a one. So those guys yeah. behind him, you can say next man up all you want to. I don't I don't give a shit about that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I agree. Especially, yeah. you, especially mm -hmm. only three years in a program that you know you have to build from the ground up in this day and age. This is not. Ten years ago, this is a different monster mm -hmm. from from ten years ago. Yeah, the yeah. SEC right and, now, and he, it's tough, bro. Yeah, it's tough. And here's my thing too: when you say it's it's a different monster, right? Like ten years ago, kids weren't coming out of high school ready to play college football. No, no, you sir. know what I mean. No, sir. Let alone in the SEC. But and let I'm me like tell you something, exactly man. Right. Let exactly. me tell you something. These kids now are way more prepared to come in and play at high levels of college football. Yeah. You know what I mean? And sometimes I think we got to remember that, you know, as, as coaching staffs and, mm -hmm. and people like these kids, these ain't high school kids from the, in the early two thousands and the 2010s, like, bro, when Isaiah ran out on the field, I was like, damn, that's some bitch big. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like he ran out there and I was like, God, Lee, <laughs> you know, and, and the, hey, him and him and EPL on that side of the line. That's what I'm talking about, bro. They looked good, and you know they had all them cats out there. And I was like, you you can't tell, you can't tell that they're all freshmen. You know what I mean? Like, I think at one point in line they had all all either a freshman or redshirt freshman 
on the line. And you'd never know. You know what I mean? And, and they I think went all the way down the field. Last before, series, uh, that's what I'm saying. That last series on defense, they had one upperclassman on the D-line, and the rest was freshmen. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, dude, they look, they just look different, dude. They look bigger. They look faster. And you're like, you'd have a hard time. Like, oh, yeah, that, that's that's the second team defense, you know, a bunch of juniors and sophomores. No, nah, bro, it was all freshmen and a upperclassman D lineman. And they yeah. good. Yeah. They look, that freaking Danny Boye, bro. <laughs> yeah. That freaking Danny Boye, bro. He looked like a. So what? What's your mic? Impressive, dude. Okoye, man, he looks – he just, man, he just looks good out there, dude. I don't know. He just – he just – bro, he looks good. He looks good. He looks man, good. I can I can witness with my own eyes. Pardon my I, language. Only, oh, you're fine. About – I live about an hour and a half or less from Tulsa. And last year when we was in, in the hot – in in the running for to get Danny Okoye, I went up went up and watched him play whoa guys <laughs> he was impressive in high school and i'm sitting here thinking why in the cornbread hell is he a three-star i mean he was yeah you know <laughs> but you got a bunch of 26 year old guys that that you know man they half of them don't know what they're doing i'm just gonna be keeping yeah. real um you know, you, you, you need to look at a kid's offer sheet. You know, yeah. if, if, if that kid is, is is got the top 10 schools in the country, you know, want him to come play, I mean, you got to take that in accountability somewhere. Mm-hmm. You know, that's that's crazy. And Isaiah asked me, you know, he's like, man, why? why? He went from number 22, guys, 22. I, I got a screenshot. He was 22 in the country and just dropped. God, you know, mm-hmm. you know, it's nothing that he did. He didn't have any bad games, but mm-hmm. what it was, if I don't come to your camp and if I don't see you, then guess what? You know, same, same way with the Under Armour deal. He didn't, he didn't go to Under Armour. Number one, he had like a little small turf toe or some crap like that. And um, mm-hmm. I was like, no, nah, we're not going out there. He was already committed. Yeah. So why no? Oh man, you gotta go and get your stock up. No, bro. No, no. That you know Mr. Did, bro. Yeah, that goes yeah. against that goes against that goes against everything that I believe in. Like yeah. that bullshit can't like bro, game film. Show yeah. me the game film. Yeah. You gotta you know what you I mean? Like it's, going it's to these watered down camps. I tell, so. I tell every parent, and I hold camps and I, I run camps. But I'm not going to never give you something that you can't take back with you. My mega camp had 75 coaches there. So guess what? If you come and you pay 100 bucks, I don't can't remember what it was, and you you get a chance to put your kid for three hours in front of 75 coaches. Mm-hmm. You, get, you got a caliper vest on. You understand what I'm saying? So guess what? As soon as it was over with, doggone Memphis. Hey, man, look. Let me get this kid's number. Let me get this kid's number. You know, Colorado, same way. So you got to give them something, bro. Yeah. You, 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 you can't just, you know, go you and say, okay, I'm not yeah, getting hear you, Jason. nothing out of it. Now, if you don't have any offers and, you, and nobody is looking at you, then guess what? Yeah, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm taking my kid because you're going to have writers there. Writers did not get you an offer. But what they do, they look – these coaches, they look, okay, they did this right up on this kid. Let me go watch his film. And boom, from the film you get there. But it's all it's all about your film. And then once they see you on film, what they're going to do, Mike, they're going to invite you down to the campus because they want to see. They want to mm-hmm. see how tall you are. They want to see is your ass – can your ass really run a 4-5, four, a 4-4, four, four, whatever. Hey, hey listen, man. You know? Hey. <laughs> We had all these offers in, in Notre Dame. Hey, man, uh, we want you to come to to camp in the summer and ball out in front of the coaches. Nah. And I was like, nah, bro, that ain't happening. Bro, we, like, bro, we got Michigan. 
You know what I mean? We got Oklahoma. You know, we got all these schools. And you want, yeah, you, come, you were you want us to Mike. You break passive. money on my and, you were passive. That's what I'm saying. I'm passive, but shit, man. We was traveling all over the place, bro. I ain't got that much money down. And you know what I mean? They're like, hey, come come to uh come to Indiana. Like, dude, I am in the army, bro. Like, if y'all want to see Mike, y'all can come see him. You know what I mean? But right. coming out of my pocket to, to travel out there so so you can you can do your eval. You can come in person and do your eval. Like, nah, bro, not happening. They got you more know, money than you do. You know, Marcus, one of my one of my favorite stories that though you talking about being being a uh, recruit that that people never sees uh back in in the 70s uh barry switcher went down to uh just outside of tyler texas and in a graduating class of 40 he gets probably one of the best linebackers that ever played at ou and george gumby and you know now granted george didn't have any offers by a lot of people but like to piggyback off of what you and you and big mike is saying barry had tape and he knew that kid was going and george turned out to be a be a uh two-time all-american three uh big eight all conference and went to the green bay packers but these that, coaches that, do that, not, that's they, do not oh, they, they do not recruit like they yeah. don't you know mike when, when i was in high school from from 85 to 89, you know, you, you saw coaches at the game, you know, and, mm-hmm. and, and, and perfect example, how I ended up getting on the scene. I was a basketball player. I had a lot of basketball scholarships. We was playing West Point High School, who was ranked nationally at that time somehow, and they had all these coaches came to see West Point's offensive line. They signed, they signed their whole offensive line, y'all, in the SEC. So guess what? It just so happened to be a 6'5", 240-pound <laughs> defensive end on the other school playing on that side, and that was me. And I had I had two sacks. I had a pick and 11 solos. Dang. The next day, Ole Miss – Arkansas. How the hell you remember your stat line that long ago, bro? Oh yeah, that was one of my best games, bro. <laughs> ain't no he. That was one of my best games, bro. Hey, hey, look, you got to remember that one, man. And, and and what's crazy about it, man? Once I um, you know, once I got to school, I was sitting in the huh. office. Y'all, y'all know how it sound. Marcus didn't come to the office. Marcus didn't come to the office. Damn, what they got me on. So <laughs> I I go up to the office, bro. Yeah, yeah, and. There's a recruiter, hey. you know. And Dude, that's how I used to go. That's how I used to go, right? That's how it used to so go, bro. My high school football, my high school football coach was the dean, right? So <laughs> when he would, when there would be a coach down in the office, you would get a pink slip. He'd send a pink slip up to your up to your room, whatever period you was in, and you know when somebody come in with a pink slip, everybody's like, "Ooh, you messed up. You got trouble." You know what I mean? <laughs> so here I am. Like every other day, you know what I mean? So I'd go down to Feynman's office, RIP to the legend, John Feynman. Um, you know, there'd be a coach sitting there, and, you know, they can't talk to you. You know, they could, back in the day, they couldn't talk to you. The coach could come to the school, he could see you, but you couldn't communicate with him. So I'd walk in there, I'd walk in there, Coach Feynman, and be like, Bo, you left your pencil in my office. It's like how many times I gotta tell you to take your shit with you when you leave, you know? Yep. And there's a there's a there's a coach sitting right there, you know. He's eyeing. He's <laughs> you wanna put the eyeball out. on you, bro? You know what I mean? Yeah, that was old yeah. school, man. Oh, yeah. Coach, yeah, 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 man. Yeah, it was, it was crazy, man. Like I remember, like the first time I, that happened, I think it might have been, I don't know if it was Coach Br- Ron Brown or Fr- uh, Frank Solich from Nebraska was sitting in the office and I come around the corner and I'm like, Oh damn. Or like, I might've said something like, Oh shit. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, I didn't know what was going on. thought I was yeah. in trouble or something, but yeah, yeah but you, it was crazy. You figured it out. Though. Stuff. You figured yeah. it out. Like yeah. after about the second or third time, I knew what it was. You know what I mean? 
That's the, that's the way they used to do it. I came in the office. Yeah. Uh, I think it was Coach Youngblood um, from Ole Miss. He was right there. Um, you know, he used to have that desk and then the principal's office. And Mr. Shaw was like, hey, come on in here. And uh, I came in. I said, you know, what's going on? He was like, hey, now, nah, you know, Ole Miss, is, they just want to see you put eyes on you, you know, just that and the third. They can't talk to you. I was like, oh, okay. He said, what you think about them? I'm like, oh, you know, I, I never been up there. You know, I didn't know anything about it. And, um, and you know, that's kind of how it went. You know, every every time a recruiter came, it was, you know, they call you to the office and that that guy be sitting there and you get a chance to go in the principal office and they'll talk to you about, the, about that school or whatever. And you walk out and it's like, almost like they're looking at you like from your, from your feet to your head, man. They just looking and smiling and nodding, you know. But, you know, they, they came to the high school game and they saw you. They saw you ball out on the field. And that's been taken away, man. But I tell you what, I tell you who do go to games, Oklahoma. I, I know Coach Bill, he, you know, he didn't he didn't get a chance to come to us. He um because some well, I know what happened. We were supposed to play at Friday, and we ended up because of the rain, they changed it to that Thursday. He was gonna come, you know, because he had everything kind of kind of worked out in his schedule. And with us changing, he couldn't come that day. But he no, he did come the day that he was supposed to come. So he just came to the school and talked to him, but he was supposed to come to the game. But um you know they do go see players, man, and you know some. It's, it might be a lot of schools go out there and do it, but I know a lot of them don't, man. They want they want the parent to do all the work, and that's not that's not fair, you know. That's, that's <coughs> fair. Yeah. I you know yeah they, North, Northwestern got Northwestern got me on that one time, Northwestern did they? and you know they was like you know come up here and, and, and take a take an unofficial visit. Uh, so we can offer you a scholarship, you know. That's what they told him. And you know, we t- we kind of turned it into a little mini family vacay up in the shy. And I love Chicago. Um, had a great, yeah, you know, it's, it's it's a good time. But you know, we went up there, you know, spent some bread, went up to Northwestern, walked out of there without an offer. So I mean, not all was lost on the trip. Yeah. Well, man, look, we we did the same thing. Uh, Isaiah sophomore year, we went to Tennessee, who was which is my my wife's alma mater, you know. Yeah. And they was like, hey, look, you know, mm-hmm. they called him, said, look, we're gonna we're gonna offer him, man. You just gotta get him up here. So we go up there, man, and a lot of see a lot of people see my wife and. You know, they're like, oh, man, that's great. You know, he's, you know, just that in the third. Man, we get up there. We up there all weekend. No offer. And, you know, my wife was hot. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she was hot, you know. Um, we, uh, yeah. we come back. And, you know, we don't hear from Tennessee. And he wasn't about 260 at that time. And then his senior year, he got up to about 285. You know, um, 285, 290 a little bit. And um, one of the guys that was there, he hit me up. He's with Jacksonville Jaguars, not Coach Mack. And, um, you know, Bama, Bama offered for, I mean, he didn't have that many offers. I think he had Mississippi State, Ole Miss, and UAB maybe at that time, and somebody else. So, anyway, but then, like, all of a sudden, the Bama, Everybody started dropping in Oregon, um, Auburn. Everybody just started dropping in and, you know, giving the offers. And then uh, my guy got a text. He's like, hey, man, you think we can get Isaiah up here? I'm like, dude, I don't think that's going to (laughs) happen. I said, you know, you had a chance when he was 15 and, you know, and you didn't didn't pull the card then, you know, when, when other schools did, you know. And my wife was like, hey, look, that's my alma mater, but guess what? We're not driving up there. You know, we went up there one time, you know, and you guys yep. didn't, didn't pull the plug. So guess what? We're not going back up there, you know. And, and, you know, the thing about it is, you know, not saying anything negative. Maybe at that time they didn't think he was going to grow, you know. Um, yeah. But he still was 6'5". That's a, a- 15. 
you know. I forgot about that uh, when I was naming coaches out and sat in the office with that old uh, Northwestern coach, the one that was the linebacker that was great there. He got fired for, you know, the, the scandals and stuff that they had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, I just remember, I remember sitting in that dude's office and I'm like, this dude's off the chain, man. Like, he made a joke, you know, we talk about like, you know, Northwestern and, you know, some stuff about, you know, kids managing their money and NIL and so they don't blow it all on tattoos and shoes. And I kind of <laughs> chuckled because I thought it was, I, I kind of chuckled because I thought it was funny. He looked right at me, bro, and didn't even crack a smile. Like, what the hell are you laughing at? And I was like, damn, my bad. I thought that was kind of funny. But yeah. you know what I mean? But yeah, he, we got I a, can't remember the cat's name, man. Pepper, I know exactly. Yeah. 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 Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald. Thanks, Tony. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Fitzgerald. But yeah, man, that was, uh, that was that was early on in the recruiting, man. Like I didn't know how things worked and the games that they played. So they Northwestern, they got us on that one. They got us on yeah, that we got one. A, we got a guest in with us. It's mine and Jason's friend, Coach Ricks. Coach Ricks in the house. What's going on, gentlemen? What's going on, brother? Uh, man, just enjoying this conversation that you guys are doing. It's great, great content. I'm just listening, Coach, because these got guys, these guys I, I, got I, I, I love hearing this. So I'm just sitting back in the shadows listening to them, man. This is this is right up the legend's alley, you know. Man, they make what, me man, back, and back and put my coaching hat on and all this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, it's, it's a different world, man. We were just talking about how different it was back you know, when we were going to school and then how much a difference is from just 10 years ago up to now, um, you know. Dude, I'm going to tell you that what I, what I hate about it. Well, go ahead. Go ahead. Would you, would you, would you, go ahead. What I, what, I hate uh, about the, what I hate about the difference. Why we kids? Right? This is the number one thing. You're buffering, Mike. <laughs> Willie Nelson back in the house. <laughs> yeah, he, he froze up. Yeah. He froze up. Man, I don't know what happened. Wow, it Am I knocked out you? everyone. Okay. I can hear you. I can hear you guys. <laughs> I can see you. Listen for hey, me. Hey, Mr. Dent. Yes. I was going. To, I heard the story, man, about back in the day when uh, the colleges came to visit you. I had that same experience, and the first thing I thought was, "What the hell did I do? Why is the principal calling me to the office?" <laughs> <laughs> and I and I and I get there, and I didn't even know that that's how it worked because that was my first recruit was University of Central Arkansas. And Coach Jones came in there and he looked at me and he was like, hey, we want to take you down to the field house and look at some footage and talk to you about maybe coming to play for us. I didn't know what to do. So I thought, well, don't my mom and dad got to be here? Does somebody? So I definitely understand that back in the day, it is completely different than the way it is now. Oh, yeah. And Here's, and the Here's the difference. Here's the difference. This is, this is what I hate about it, right? Is they have direct access to your yes. 16, 17 year old yep. child, right? Yep. Twitter, phone call, they can just show, you know what I mean? And yeah. when we were getting recruited, there was really only one method, man. They had to wait till the evening and call you on the house phone. Yep. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And and that that's the stuff that kind of that kind of irks me, man, because you know, some of the, you know these coaches, they're 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 uh they're sneaky, man. They're slick, and I was just like, that, I don't know, man. Sometimes it just didn't sit with me. Like you know, I just got these random dudes, you know, talking my son and offering them the world and you know telling them all this craziness and yeah, I well, I, I had a well, problem with that. Thing, they, they they like, like school. School. for them to tell for them, them to tell school. for them to tell your kid that. You know, I know your parents is going to do this, but man, this is your decision. 
Man, no, this is a. If this oh, is a yeah. Story, oh, that burns my. Uh, you I, can say, I can say it now because it's over. My daughter had a scholarship to NC State, and they deliberately told her, well, since you're 18, if you just sign this, it, you can make all your decisions, and it'll be between us. I yeah. went up there and threw a fuck. Oh, excuse me. I threw a fit. Yeah, you're good. I already because, dropped them. Because uh, I told them all, this is a family decision. This ain't no 18-year-old decision. Because if Bruh. you get my child, you get the whole family. Man, look, who do who do they think pay for all this training? Thank you. <laughs> going up and down the road to camps and to all this other stuff. Who you, who do they think did that? Yeah. And if a school ever came at, at my child like this is not a family decision, then guess <laughs> what? We we don't need to be there. Yeah. It was a family decision when we had to bring mother to you. Yeah. Although yeah. although you know. At the end of the day, it's gonna be his decision. Yeah. Okay. But you just don't say, "Hey, man, look, we ain't got to worry about your parents." You're 18 years old, bro. 18. You can't make every decision by yourself. Man, these are some big decisions. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm, and you yeah, can't. Bro. You can't. You, so you want to trap that 18 year old? Pretty much is what you want to do. You ever hear about these guys? Uh, you know, in the music game, man, how they got these deals that was jacked up when they first got there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They didn't have no guidance, bro. A school yeah. can do your kid the same way. Not saying that it will, but it's easy for them to do you like that. Mm -hmm. I had a, I had a school or yeah, they took my daughter to uh, a strip club. And once my mom, once my wife found out, it was a wrap. It didn't mm -hmm. matter. It didn't matter what they offered, what they said, what they did. It was a wrap. Dude, your morals are screwed up. Exactly. Well, some of these people, man, they they think they know you. They they talk to the wrong people. They talk to your friends, the kids' friends, and think that the kids' friends have their best interest at heart, and they don't. Mm -hmm. If hey, I can't hey, come Greg. to, if I can't come to the mom and dad and talk to you then there's an issue because it start, regardless of what I want to think, it starts with mom and dad. Hey, it starts with, hey, Gre I, Greg. I, I come into your home, so it starts with mom and dad. Yeah, Greg and, Ray, it's, it's the availability report, bro. It's yeah. the availability report. We can't call it the injury report. No, right, Jason, a, Jason a, ain't big. Availability. Is this and, and availability. what is he? Is he, is he probable? Is he out? Like, what, <laughs> what's, what's the status? <laughs> What's the status, he's, Greg Ray? Like man, he's man. probable. He's probable. He's probable. Hey, what's today? Today's Monday. We still got till Wednesday to decide. We got a couple the days. That's the that's the sneak. <laughs> that's the sneak availability report. The, the yeah, he needs to the he breed. Needs, he needs to go in the cryo room for a couple of days and get you oh. know. <laughs> it's killing him, man. It's getting high. It's killing uh, him. I know it is. Yeah, that's funny. you know. I'm going. I love Jason to death. I think he has one of the best shows on on YouTube. And uh, anytime that I get a chance to come on with, and today's my first time with Marcus Dent. But you know, Jason, he he gives his all to us. You know, great show, great content. Love you, Jason. Oh yeah, man. Oh man. I, I mean, if he wasn't, you know, I got a, you know, I can, I got a pretty good judge of character, man. Yeah. And you know, the first couple of times we, you know, he talked, we talked on Twitter, and man, we talked about a few things, man. You can pick up on people that's real. And it's been a couple of guys that have hit me up, man. I, I'm just not, you know, I got nothing against them, but I didn't feel like I would be, you know, my words wouldn't be criticized. You know, mm -hmm. everybody's open to the criticism, but you know, some people get you in a spot so they can try to uh, leverage that. You know, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And Jason is not the one of those guys, man. He wants you to get – he going to let you give your truth. And that's that's why I like coming on here, man. And well, I ain't going to lie to you because when, when I first reached out to Big Mike, I was shaking like a dog shit in peach pits, man, because here's, <laughs> here, here's, one, here's one of the players' dads 
that I and and I mean I'm sitting here messaging him. My thumbs are sitting here going. He said, "Hell yeah, legend, let's rock with it." I was like, "Oh my freaking god!" Uh, I yeah, got dude. This. Listen, and, uh, man, I, I'm an old, washed up college football player. I ain't me, special. Me I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. Hey, I'm not famous. I'm a regular guy. Like I'm just like I've had people come up to me and talk to me all the time, and and they're like, "Man, you're you're a you're just a regular guy." I'm like, "Well, thank you. I hope that's a compliment." Like you know, I did. You know, I just I should I say what's up. Holla at me. You know what I mean? Come talk some shit or something. I don't. You know, I, I'm just a regular dude, man. Like, like I'm not a I'm not famous. You know what I mean? Like, I'll, you know, that's, that's the only reason. The only reason y'all want to talk to me is because my son can play football. Like, other than that, y'all wouldn't give a two damn about what I said. But, Miss Mister Dent, I would like to extend an invite to you if you ever want to come on my show. Feel free to. Oh man, that's definitely, bro. Definitely, definitely. Same here with you, man. Yeah, we uh, we get on there. We talk a little football. We talk a little bit about recruiting. Um. Kind of like what we're talking about right now, man. You know, I just go a little bit in depth because that's what I do outside, you know, of, you know, being retired now, man. I, I work with the U.S. Army Bowl um, as a scout for them. Um, wow. Man, but, uh, you know, yeah, man, that's, that's, that's what I do. That's what I love doing. And, you know, um, helping kids get to the next level is what I've always been about. Um, one of my seven-on-seven seven players are having a, is having a really good season. At Lowell for uh, Chris Bell, I'm a zero, and um, you know I just hit him up this morning, man. You know, I, I used to call him all Young Blood. You know, you know I'm old school, mm -hmm. so you know I ain't a little proud of Young Blood. You know, just <laughs> being from the Mississippi Delta, man, and a lot of people didn't get a kid a chance around here, and Lowell came and scooped him up. And just so happened, the recruiter from Lowell is from Mississippi. You know, so he came in and scooped the kid up, and he was like, "Coach, what you think, like?" Get up out of here, bro. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't you can't play around with these schools. You know, they're looking at you. Yeah, we're gonna, you know, we just gonna, man, no, nah, they're looking at their board and seeing who they're they're gonna get or not gonna get before they offer you. Louisville wants you, man. Go where you want it. Boom, he's up out of here yeah. doing great things and probably gonna get a shot to leave, man. So, you know, those are things, man, that makes me feel, you know, great to see my players come out of my organization. Yeah, get a shot, but you never see me on Twitter talking about that's my guy or this right here because it's not about that, man. Once you help somebody, you don't have to go out there and put out there that that's your kid to get accolades because you doing that, then you're doing it for the wrong reason, bro. Mm -hmm. Definitely doing it for the wrong reasons, man. So, you know, I, I love what I do helping kids, man. Um, man, I didn't got into uh, Mike. I ain't tell you, man, but. We got we got the first flag football team here in Mississippi for women, uh, for girls, because they got like 16 schools that are giving full scholarship now. So man, we had a tryout yeah. a few months ago, and um, them girls, hey, they them girls that serious, was playing bro. before the uh, them girls that was playing before the Army Bowl last year, in, yeah, in, in Dallas, dude, the yeah. girls was balling, dude. That they one girl, I can't, I don't remember her name, but. Dude, she was killing them. Right. <laughs> she was, right. and she was good. She yeah, was really man, good, and, man. and a lot of those girls are track girls, man. And uh, yeah. we got a we got a young lady that's on our team right now, man. She if she catch it and get around that corner, bro, she got a step. It's mm. over. It's just like her running the two twenty. I mean, she gets <laughs> up out of there, man. She she gone, bro. And yeah. man, they passionate about doing it. So if we can help those girls get, get a scholarship to go to school. Hey man, why not? You know, our season starts in uh, I want to say February. March. Our season starts in March with those girls, and it goes into March, April, and May. And you know, got a got a pretty good you know got a pretty good little staff. It's gonna be our first year forward, man. I'm super excited to see them. You know, you know. So mm -hmm. that's that's what I'm about, man. My podcast, everything I do, that's what we try to do. Yeah, I'm going hey, to get over and, I'm a, and hit you a sub, Marcus. Uh, hey, Gridiron Insight, is that your podcast? Yeah, the Gridiron Insight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, so so I got to meet uh, – I met Martine Grammatica, Automatic or Grammatica one time at a uh, at a K-State visit. Um, you know, he's a, he's a – he was a K-State's kicker. 
probably all the best kickers or whatever. And he comes sat down right across from us, you know, we're having a little pregame dinner. And uh, so, you know, we chopped it up or whatever. And, you know, his son was his son was there on a visit. He's a kicker too. But, you know, I started following him on the IG. And you should go watch his daughter play flag football. Hey, wow. she is a beast. I'm talking about mossing people, like making people miss, shaking people. Dude, his daughter is cold. His daughter is cold. Mm. She is the real deal. One guy said, we got there when Caden Green trying for the Hey man, if you want to go, he want to go. I ain't, I ain't trying to save nobody. Nah. When, you go, go. when you got, I gave, the, Marcus, there are, there I got you, uh, buddy. I, I went and subbed your channel just now. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'll do the same for you. Um, yeah, man. It's, it's, you know, it's crazy. You know how people on the outside will say things and don't know what the hell they're talking about. And that's one thing I had to get get into Isaiah's head, you know, when things kind of, you know, kind of started, kind of, you know, falling off a little bit. He was like, this, that, and the third. I'm like, man, look, man, screw them. Yeah, they, ain't, they ain't that practice with you guys. They don't know what the hell going on. I said, but I can tell you this. Y'all start winning, and you go to a bowl game, you win, or you win a natty. Those same naysayers is going to be, gonna be right behind you yeah we number one you know that shit gonna happen bro so guess what man Mar put the noise behind you and keep the fuck march man marcus i can't i can't tell you how many times during the 90s and i'm an old ou sooner fan way back and during them horrible 90s of gary gibbs schnellenberger black we win the natty in the 2000 in 2000 and the same naysayers that that tore up their OU stuff and said, "I, what what was they doing? Yeah, we're number one. We, we I'm like, guys, where was you during the nineties? <laughs> they was sitting at the crib, talking mess. Yeah, yeah. You know, didn't have the internet then, boy. If y'all had had the internet then, God, <laughs> shit, man, it'd been crazy." Yeah, the guy, hey, I got to jump off of here. My my brother has needs needs me down at his house. He apparently he's got a busted pipe. So all right, I only live I only live three right thirty three three thirty brother three thirty Mike and Mike on Mondays hashtag I'm hashtag for sure and hey. uh, go go ahead good luck with that man take your take your waiters take your waiters <laughs> oh I'm going I got my hip waiters. If it's deep enough, I'll even get in my fishing tube and uh, float in there. <laughs> but uh, before I get off here, y'all can find me at Sooner Legends Podcast on uh, YouTube. Find me at Twitter or X, uh, Okie Cowboy 1969. This is the legend. We'll see you on the backside. Boomer Sooner. So Stephen G asked a good question. Um, after what you guys... So what you guys saw the past two weeks? Is there any hope we can win one of the next three games? Hell so yeah. let's go. Let's let's of talk course. about it, right? Let's go. I'm gonna go game Hell by game. Yeah. Mizzou. Oh yeah, for sure. I'm not. I haven't been impressed with Mizzou all season. Um, we'll see what happens with with Cook, their quarterback. Um, Alabama. Um, defensively, I think we can do well against Alabama. They're a little leaky. On the, on the defensive side, I think we could run the ball, and uh, we keep improving. It'll be good. Now, what? Who? That Ryan Williams scares the shit out of me, uh, the, the receiver. So we have to put a game plan in for him. And I, I think we got if we can keep Milro contained and make him sit in the pocket and throw the ball, um, we got a real good chance. In LSU, they're up and down, man. They're kind of like Alabama, you know. You don't I, know I who you're gonna get with LSU, bro. Yeah, I and it, I think I, I don't think any team's gonna run on us. Um, so you know if we can shut them down and, and maybe maybe win the turnover battle, I, I do think we can win three games. And I, I do think that uh, 
you know, I told I told Mike and Reggie this weekend, I'm like, hey, man, I'm selfish as shit right now. I need y'all to win another game because I want to go to a bowl game. And I'm, I'm being selfish. I ain't like that usually, but I want to go to a bowl game and, have, and party a little bit. So I need y'all to get that done. <laughs> hey, definitely, man. Uh, man, I'm just looking at what Ole Miss done and what South Carolina done this weekend. Those are teams, man, we gave, we pretty much gave South Carolina 21 points, bro. Yes. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? So you, you take away that and you take away the bad third downs that we had in the third quarter against Ole Miss one. We were third and two when we ended up third and 12 on a couple of different occasions. Man, we in the ball game, man, with, with two teams right now that are peaking. Mm-hmm. God, if we, yeah. you know, just like this week here, we understand, okay, this is what we got to do. Yeah, no, it wasn't it wasn't South Carolina, but hey, look, you still got the same scheme. They're just gonna be bigger, faster, stronger. You just gotta you just gotta move quicker, think faster. Mm-hmm. That's all yeah, you got. I, you know, I you think we are though. we are a lot closer than what everybody thinks, man. Oh, I think man. we're a lot closer. Than, man, but man. it's all overreaction. You know, the sky's falling type type stuff, but oh yeah. Yeah, I, I we're we're Dude, these last two weeks, man, we're a different football team. Um, and I think uh, I think uh, we got a good shot of, of getting it done here down the stretch. No, and hitting I'm, that over bet, man. Hitting that I over agree bet. With you guys. Seven and I agree a half with wins. You. I agree with you guys, man. There's The way that these teams beat up on teams this weekend, that game didn't look that way with Oklahoma. Oklahoma pretty much gave those games away. If you really want to mm-hmm. go back and think about oh, it, oh no, definitely, definitely. And we don't have that that dysfunction now. You know, Seth is gone. I think everything is turning around. Guys are gaining confidence. People don't realize confidence is very contagious. And once you start gaining momentum, and you start believing in the the man next to you, a lot of these things take care of themselves. So I can definitely see us beating up on Missouri because if their quarterback isn't playing. They don't. They look completely different. They didn't do a darn thing against Alabama, and I think Oklahoma's defense is just a little bit better than Alabama's. I could be wishing. I think they're a lot better. I think they're a lot better. I could be wishing, but when you talk about the wide receiver, if we play a cover two man o- over top, you will eliminate all the big all the big throws. Yes, sir. Yeah, and that's I don't, what know, I we, I don't know if we would do that, but definitely that cat scares me. You know, yes. I mean, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. I'm just keeping it real, you know. And I, no. I know our defense; they they know what he's capable of doing. Oh yeah, you know? everybody is capable. Of, everybody know what he's capable of because that guy has made dramatic catch after dramatic catch. But I would put, I would have to put Eli. I put Eli on him. I hate mm. to say it. I would put Eli Bowen on no, him. I, and, they and hate then, to say it. They ain't no hate to say it. That's that's who you need to put on him. Eli, that dude, man. Yeah, put Eli on him and then put help over top. And then I think everything else takes care of itself. You already know that Milroy and everything, you got to contain him inside and out. So you should be pretty good on beating those teams. I don't know about LSU, man. LSU is a wishy washy team. They play different at night. And if that's a night game, they tend to play different. They do, bro. Yeah. It's like a different – it's like – it's just like taking the batteries out of your little remote control car and putting some fresh batteries in. That's exactly. what happens when you play at night with them. You yeah. know, you see a kind of sluggy, you take some new – take the old batteries out and put some new batteries in. And, you know, that's, that's kind of how you is, <laughs> man, when it comes to night. You know, it's crazy, though. Yeah. But they, well, Steven – so Steven G followed up with it. So Steven G followed up with it. If – uh we win all three. Do you think Joe John Finley gets an interview for a full time OC? Go ahead, Big Marcus. What you think? Ooh. If he wins all three of these, how can you not? Yeah. I, I think he gets an interview. I don't, anyway. the, I don't care nothing about the big name deal. When if you got something that's working, you take that on into the next season. And you yeah. you roll the I, dice with it. I, I think I'm gonna go one farther, Stephen G. And I said if we win these last three, I think he gets 
the OC job, not just the interview. I think he gets it. Yeah. I mean, if if we beat Bama, Mizzou, LSU, and get to a bowl game and win that, dude, you're talking about nine and four? Dude, come on. Yeah. Somebody said BB just offered the number one offensive lineman in 26. Being the one who missed it. He should. What's his name? What's his name? I don't know. I have no idea. I think that he should get it, but I don't know if BB is going to do that. And I don't know if it's pressure. I don't know if he's saying that he has to have, have a high hire or someone. I just don't know. Well, but, but let me let me let, let me ask you this right here. I, I understand what you're saying, but you talking about a guy who turned around in this. Functional yes. offense. <laughs> oh, yes. You understand what I'm saying? A dysfunctional offense. And he's making some very functional out of it. But guess what, bro? Guess what's going to happen? You think somebody else ain't going to give him the shot? Oh, yeah. And we'll be looking down the barrel. Bro, he going he gonna right to Mississippi State, bro. He going right around the corner for me. Well, he, he probably will for him. If, yeah, oh, you know, maybe oh, yeah. for a year or two to somebody want him. But look, I can see a La Tech. I can see a I can see a G5 getting him. Oh yeah. I can see a G5 hiring him as he, a OC. He, Number one, he, dude, he, he, Levy Levy is, Levy. Hey, Levy is gonna scoop him up quicker than Alabama would scoop up BB. All well, right. dude, Levy, Levy will scoop up Joe Wilson. John in, in point one nine seconds. You know what I mean? And then Levy gonna be Levy gonna take control and be more of the CEO type instead of play caller. Because it's like the same guy. Yeah, no, that's, a, that's a fact. Mm. Yeah, man, that could happen. Let me let me oh, ask I, you guys. Let me ask you guys a question. You know, since you guys were at the game, I've always asked this question: Wasn't there a different type of atmosphere playing against Maine this past week? Was it because of just because it's Maine, or the confidence is really building? Uh Go ahead, Mike. Man, I'm gonna tell you the first the first five minutes, I might have said every cuss word under the sun. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, uh, but you know, I think I don't think it was electric as 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 usual um, for obvious reasons. You know, I think the weather, uh, the time change, uh, had effect on on turnout. But you know, it it was uh hey, hold, the energy. Hey, look, this guy right here, up. check this out, Mike. This guy right here said if Levy wanted him, he would have took him with him. But bro, let me tell you something. He tried to take him with him. He yeah. chose to stay at Oklahoma. Yeah, yeah. He chose to yeah. stay at Oklahoma. He he mm -hmm. asked him to go with him. That was his best man in his wedding, bro. Yeah. No, they're real tight. They are tight, tight, tight. They super tight. I know because Jeff offered Isaiah when he was 14 or 15 years old, and Joe John was at Ole Miss then. So, no, it ain't no – I mean, dude, let me tell you something. It, I tell you what you do. Go back and listen to the post-game interview. If that sounds like I don't sound like Jeff Levy, man, I eat this house with no salt. <laughs> <laughs> That's real talk, bro. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, it, it is what it is, and I'm not I'm not sitting up here saying, you know, okay, he's got to be the guy next year. I'm saying if this guy wins out, bro, man, come on, come on, bro. Yeah, if you think about that. You already got the the guys love him, man. They love him, bro. Yeah, they love him. You know. Look, look like him and Coach Bimbo working pretty good together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's all. I think it's a. I think it's a. It's a logical path. Um, if he wins out, if he wins these three, uh, I think it's a. I think it's a logical path, and I don't know if it'll go over too well, but I. 
I'm here for it. If it, if he, if he hey, does look, it, I'm here for it, man. Hey, what what coach say about hey? You got to be uncommon sometimes, bro. Mm -hmm. Very much. Yeah. It might not be the yeah. common thing to do because of what happened. You got to be uncommon. Yeah. He was he stuck around for a reason, guys. Come on now. He could have went with his buddy and got a lot of money, but he stayed for a reason. Yeah. Maybe he knew that he was going to get this opportunity one day here. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, he just a fun – he's a fun coach, man. Yeah. I think yeah, the man. guys are learning a lot of fun to him, man. And I hate that it's going to be this force to hire, you know, got to go out and get a superstar, man. We got to go out and get somebody that – their scheme works with our players. Yeah. You know, if they don't get that, then we're going to be in the same boat that we were in, bro. You yeah, I'm not a big fan of somebody who not a big well. fan of starting from starting from scratch. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jason. But hey, man, let me go, man. I got this puppy here. He's been cooped up. <laughs> I got to get him. I got to get him out here. I Dude, get him out I can, hey, look. And, uh, that's what's crazy. I gotta go get mine out the kettle, man. He's been there all weekend, man. So yeah, we gotta yeah. go. Get, I gotta go get him the same way, man. So I'm gonna get ready to get off him and stuff. Yeah, he over here chewing on my toes and stuff, man. So <laughs> I heard him pop back up. He's ready to get outside, man. I'm seeing if it'll work or not. I was gonna just say goodbye to everybody, but uh, hey, I man, look, hey, I appreciate good. it, man. Oh, you know, like I, I said, man, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna keep plugging at it, though, bro. That's for sure. I mean. I yeah, think we sure. got a I think we got a great thing going on and we're going to I think these next 3 3 games bro I think people are going to be impressed with what they see win lose or draw I think you're going to be in, you're going you're going you're going to be in the football game and you're going to see some fight Oh yeah I, I can guarantee you that I can guarantee you that from the O line to the D line to to from they 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 in, they're in a fight mode right now bro and I just I feel like you know, you know how when you just feel good about something, bro, you just feel good about the atmosphere and being around the kids. I mean, yeah. being around the guys this weekend, Mike, you saw it. They felt good, man. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so, hey, man, shout out to Cole BV, man. You know, I'm with him, man, all the way. He's my guy. Well, it's yeah, good man. to have you guys yeah, come in sure. and talk about this and, and be able to to really kind of give some some insight into that because I mean and I was good with sitting out and just letting you guys handle this because this real talk coming from the inside of that of that of that room your your boys are happy that means that you're happy and 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 I agree, I argue I agree with you that that right now it seems like it's a lot better from every angle you know we, we you can see it you can see it on the field and you can see it on the field against Ole Miss too. Before anybody just says, hey, don't, "Don't go there with that main shit again." Before anybody goes there, they look good on the field against Ole Miss. And had it not been for some injuries and not, you know, listen, they didn't take the chance on Isaiah that day, but they probably should have. Um, in the end, I think that you gave them all they could handle. The defense is still going to step up there and do what it's going to do every week too. Look, I think you got a good opportunity this weekend to kind of show yourself if you're JJF. I don't know that I believe that they're going to keep him around so much, but I do understand what you guys are talking about. Yeah. And I'm not saying they're going to keep him around. I'm just saying if he wins out, man, that's a hard conversation. That's just a hard conversation. And the, and the kids want him, and you went out, you go nine and four and get a bowl game. Pretty much what we kind of a lot of people projected us to be anyway. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I think nine and four, nine and four, nine and or you know even ten and three if you you know went ahead and won the bowl game or whatever. But my feelings is, is that we came into it thinking nine and three anyway for the regular season. See what you do, and if you know you could have seen eight and four and possibly even seven and five. It just all depends on what you had happen with your, you know, injuries and stuff like that. Now, nobody expected the injuries that they had, but the truth is, is that, you know, if, if you, if you can finish seven and five at this point, then you're in good shape, you know? 
I think I think that's just a fact. So that means that you won one of these. You you won Mizzou, and you probably you got to win one of the last two to get to seven. You know, and I think that's doable. We hadn't had a we hadn't had a really good showing at home, and I right. think we do the Alabama game. I yeah, we do the Alabama game, man. Like I said, I'm out of here, y'all. All right, dog. Man, y'all. Big Mike, thank yeah. you so much for coming in, my man. Appreciate yeah, you. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, man. But, anytime, but, yeah, Jason. I, I think later. that's one of the biggest things that uh that we have right now, bro. Is uh, we hadn't had a great showing at home, and I think I think we do. Right. You know, I think Listen, do. I think they are due for sure. You know, you haven't you haven't really seen. A big a big game from them yet. So that's what you gotta hope for. I think that you know, hey, look. This guy here said, you know, BB has to get the OC right, my OC high right. I'm much yeah. proven. Okay, if a guy beats Mizzou, LSU, and Alabama, and Alabama. that's proven it. Yeah, I, th- I think there's a lot of pressure that's going to be coming from a from a lot of areas. But I agree with you. I think that if you if you win out, I said this from the start. If, if he won out from there, you know, you you beat Missouri, which you need to beat Missouri either way. You beat Missouri, you beat Alabama, and because Alabama, look, they beat Georgia, so we know that Alabama can play well. Now we do know that they've been kind of iffy, so. And your defense is going to give you an opportunity, but if you if you can put up enough points to beat Alabama, and then you could go on the road and put up enough points to beat an LSU team that really what they have is offense, then I don't you, know. You beat two teams that beat our playoff contenders. The teams that beat you, yeah. Pre, um, Joe John Fenner. That's right. So if you beat an LSU, hey man, they beat Ole Miss. They did. You and, beat Alabama. And they beat Georgia. <laughs> they beat. That's right. That's what I'm saying. So mm-hmm. I mean, you can say not proven. You can say he doesn't have a a, a a long track record. You can say that. I can give you that, but I can't say not proven. You know what, Mac? This right here is ridiculous to me because if they win the last three games, it's more of an indictment on BV for the Seth hire. Okay. He made a mistake on the hire. I think everybody already damn well knows that, right? I think that that's clear that that they didn't make the right move with Seth. But you know what? He also fired him and and brought the right guy. If they win the last three games, that means that he fired him and they, they turned it around in a big way. So you can indict all you want from your fucking couch. Mm. You know, you can sit over there on your couch and talk all the shit you want to talk. But the point, the bottom line is, is that he's doing, he did what everybody wanted him to do, which is get rid of Seth. And then he got a guy that in there that flipped it. Now, do I think that, do I think that, that Joe John is going to recruit well enough as the OC or that he's going to have enough cachet to do it? Probably not. I'm, I'm going to tell you that I, that probably not, but I will say this. It's not up to us at that point. And if he wins the last three games against, you know, well, Mizzou isn't a, isn't a, a playoff contender at this point. But I would tell you this: you know that Alabama and LSU are. You would that means you would knock them out of playoff contention. Time to play spoiler, baby. Time to play spoiler. And Look, you know, I'm gonna say this before I get out of here, Jason. It is, you know. Regardless how this thing go for for Joe John, man, hey, I like what he brings to the table. I like you know him as a person, man. He can't. He's been to my house. He's yeah. been here before, and you know, I mean, he's just a stand up guy, man. And the kids love him. He's 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 he. You can approach him. You can talk to him. And I think the kids like that, man. You know, um, he's. I don't know if that was all the case with. You know, Coach uh, Latrell, I don't know because I'm not going to speak bad on the man because I don't know anything about him like that. But I do, all I know is from a parent perspective and a fan perspective, I do see a spark in the kids. 
And if you can't see a spark in the kids, even from the Ole Miss loss, even to the to win Saturday, then you got blinders on. You know, so I'm gonna leave you guys with that, man. I'm gonna gotta get ready. I gotta go. I gotta go do the same thing, man. I gotta go get the dog. Out the hey, man, I appreciate the time that you gave us. You guys carried the show until I could get back in here, and I I, I appreciate you, man, for real. Ah, right, right, man, peace out, bro. I'll talk at you later, man. Thanks a lot. Make sure you guys get over there and check out uh, his show. Amazing show. Marcus show is uh, the, we've got it right here. The gridiron insight, man. They, Hey, him and uh, his boy, Michael love the show, man. It's a lot of fun all the time. And uh, so get, make sure you get over there, check it out. It's always a lot of fun, man. And they talk, they, Hey, look, they got recruiting insight like crazy in the sec they know SEC football very well. Uh, you should definitely get over there and check them out. I appreciate those guys, both of them, coming in and doing that. Coach Ricks, you as well. I see we lost you too. So thank you so much for coming in. Um, you know, look, guys, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I think that this is going to be what happens because I don't. I don't know that, it, uh, you know, it's a ton of injuries. There's a lot of things that that we don't know. That's right. This right here is kind of funny. And, yeah, you know, JJF did. BV should have seen. BV should have seen. BV should have seen. You know, how much of it How much of it do you think is on, Is on? you know, because if I'm not mistaken, are you one of the ones that's been calling for the head of BB too there, Mac? Because I got to tell you, it, we can pull and grasp at straws and, tell, and you can think what you want to think all you want to, but – you don't know everything that went on in that damn locker room and how it all went down either. You don't even know why did, Why is it that, that Seth Luttrell got the job? You think it was just because of Brent Venables? Because chances are it wasn't. You know there's more people involved in this thing than just BV. And, you know, yeah, he's, gonna, he's never going to put it off on anybody else. You know, it is what it is. And... T Boomer, you know, I don't think you're wrong here. He said he got to have a back seat. He got to sit back and see how not to coach the offense. Look, and the other thing is this. I think that part of the reason that you're seeing them turn it around a little bit on the offensive side is because the guys that are still here, they know that other offense. This offense is what you've seen from them with Lebby. Whether or not he hired, yeah, I, I think he has to hire the right OC. But if I'm going to tell you this. If he wins the last three games, including beating Alabama and beating LSU, how do you figure that it's not the right OC if you keep Joe John? I mean, if they if they go in there and do that, I don't you believe that, but how do you know that for sure? You say you believe it. Do you know that? Cuz I don't think you know it. This is where people need to get a grip. Joe C has seen the bad and the good. Look, yeah. BV's gonna do what BV does. And it's it, what I know is this. He's in charge of he definitely is in charge of his supposedly he's in charge of making his own hires. So you could be right, but you may not know. I've heard some things that make me think that maybe not, but that doesn't mean I'm I'm telling you that I don't know. Any more than you do. I've heard rumors that say that that's not the case. We've also heard heard it said that he's in charge of hiring whoever he wants to. But it comes from both places. It comes, it, you know, you get both stories depending on who you're talking to, and you know as well as I do. If you know anything about this program, that there's more people making decisions and and pushing their weight around than just. Joe C or that administration at, at Oklahoma. You know that. I know that. Even a close loss with all the injuries is a good sign. I don't think that you I don't think that he saves himself without winning all three of them. I don't. And I don't know that he does if he wins all three of them. I'll just be honest with you. It's just how it is. But 
I would tell you this. I, I, my hope is that they just get it turned around here. And I don't really care how they do it. You know, the, I'll say this part about, you know, from what, in, here's what I've heard from Chris Mason. I haven't heard that stuff you guys are talking about with the Bill, Bill Biedenboe side of it. That's not what I've heard from him. But if that's the case, then I, I think he's off. I think I think he's missing on that one. That it, I haven't heard it from him directly, so I don't know that that's what he said. But I do kind of n tend to agree with them that at least there is a there's a a narrative out there that he's not recruiting or developing the tight ends as well as you'd like to see him doing that. Okay, fine. I can see that. So I don't know that there's that there's a whole lot of you know, Seth had experience as a play caller, and JJF didn't, except for one bowl game. That's why Brant went with Seth. Yeah, but it ended. I don't even think that JJF really called that game, did he? No. Look, I'm I'm not going to sit here and argue with you guys. I'm just telling you. In the end, it is what it is. They're, they're gonna. It's not gonna be up to us anyway. I. I do. I agree with what you're saying as far as he has to make a, a, the right hire here. Absolutely. Absolutely. I said it in my column the other day that his job in his legacy at Oklahoma absolutely depends on what he does here. But it doesn't matter whether he whoever he hires. The donors always have a hand. You're damn right they do. Whoever he hires, if he if he hires the guys that everybody's talking about, let's say he goes out and gets, uh, let's say he goes out and gets Kultaneki, and it doesn't work out. He's still on his ass. If he if he hires JJF full time, if he keeps him around and and does it again, and rolls the dice there, they he's got to do well too. It doesn't matter who he hires as far as, it, you know, it's easy for us to sit here and say that we know whether or not he's the guy or not, you know. But you can but yeah, you can bet that the donors are going to have a hand in it. But I would tell you this. It doesn't matter if he goes and gets um, Will Stein or Colton Eckie or G.J. Kenny or whoever the hell. Whoever it is the offense has to be on point next year so that they have an opportunity to win cuz if he if they don't end up winning out and they say they're 6 and 6 7 and 5 if they're 6 and 6 7 and 5 i don't know how hot his seat is but it's not going to be it's he's not safe safe i'd put it that way the impact of kevin johns you absolutely correct hey that's absolutely true Look, he's already on staff. He's already on staff. And here, may I remind you that Kevin Johns is twice been um, nominated for the Broyles Award for the number. That's the number one assistant coach in the country. He was pretty high up on the list to get the job at Duke, which is why he ended up as just an analyst here. All the hiring had already been done. He's done a good job in the past, and I, it looks to me like he's done a good job with these guys just in the little amount of time he's been in there working with them. Now, I agree with you that Seth was not, a, was not a great hire. It wasn't a good hire. But I also don't know that that there wasn't something else in there. But you got, you got to remember this. Seth is a national champion player, and his dad was too. So... There could have been a lot of pressure there, and that's what I hear, that there was some pressure there for him to make that hire. And I could also see that, you know, having never called plays before, he didn't want to just, on Lebby's, on Lebby's saying that he could do it, he didn't want to just trust and believe in that. That, to me, tells me that it wasn't quite as lazy, but I still probably would have went with Matt Wells if it was me. In the end, we'll see. We'll see, guys. I appreciate everybody coming in. If you haven't hit that like button, man, you guys got to make sure you do that. This is uh, this was good.
good call good solid content go back and check out the other video before it got all screwed up and uh you can check out where they were talking there as well plus you know you have my uh my twitter sunday twitter uh feed uh it's kind of funny so get in there and check that one out as well appreciate all you guys for coming in spending some time with us giving us your opinions we appreciate that always and i even if i agree with you or don't um i still enjoy listening to what you guys have to say and you giving your opinion here so i appreciate that mac that includes you everybody in here thanks a lot for coming in sooner in texas ryman lim and stephen g greg um all you guys max max swearingen appreciate all you guys man all, everybody who's popped in said hello to us ace trey t boomer Topher, uh, chicken was in here a little while ago. I know. Thank you for coming in, guys. Let's see. Let me just go through here and say hello. Clint Peakney, appreciate that. Fourth and goal, Seawalt. My boy Seawalt in here for a little while. Of course, we have, you know, Bishop Frank as well, always. Um, let's see who else. I don't want to miss anybody here. Coach Ricks. My man, Coach Ricks, obviously Sooner legend, man, to pop in and kind of kind of hold it down for me as well. I appreciate that. Ryman Lemon, you're the man, as always. Um, guys, we appreciate everybody popping in here, checking us out. Don't forget to get over there and check out the Sooner Legend podcast. Uh, it's Mike and Mike on Monday. So make sure, hey, Duke Hoover Sooner, my man. Good to see you, man. No, I appreciate you, man. And it's it's good. I, I like it. But and that's what this that's what this show is for. I like getting other opinions. It's all good. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Did I get it? What? My article. Yeah, I popped it up on. Uh, I just had to do it as a regular blog post, but it's there. It's there. It's actually been getting some good uh, reviews and stuff. So I appreciate that. But I do want to do it. I'll, I'll I'll shoot. I'll hit you with a message here in just a minute. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Duke. Good to see you, my man. Make sure you guys, guys get over there and check out Sooner Legend Podcast. Mike and Mike be back on at 3.30 Eastern time. Bishop Frank, I think, will be in there as well. I might even pop in and say hello for a little while if I can get this damn thing straightened out. I got a mess in here right now. But I appreciate you guys. See you on the next one.